Yo, it's Lux from Server Pro, and welcome to this tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to install and use the plugin called Item Join. This plugin is very customizable and there's a lot to show, so in this tutorial I'm going to go over the basic bits which should hopefully be enough to get you started. So to install the plugin, simply go to the control panel and go to the plugin section and then just type in item join. Make sure it's the one with this picture, click the install button and restart your server and that's it, as easy as that. I've also installed Vault and Essentials X. Essentials X is the economy plugin and the Vault is the API for it. These plugins make it so that if there's any command that requires uh, the player to pay something, uh, it'll just take that money from the in-game account. Uh, there's also other plugins which you can uh, install and use with this plugin, um, like Multiverse, but I'm not going to show you all of that in this video since it'll take forever. If for whatever reason you cannot find the plugin in the control panel, go to the Spigot page, link in the description, and download it from there. You can then install the plugin manually. Apart from that, that's it for the installation. Now it's time to set up and configure the plugin. Go to the control panel, then file manager, plugins, item join and open the config.yml. You're not going to need to change a lot of things here unless you really want to. For example, one neat thing you can change is the prevent pickup option. If you put that to true, players won't be able to pick up dropped items on the server. But the most important part is to enable vault integration. So to enable that, scroll down and where you see vault, change that to true and that way the server knows to utilize it. As I said before, you can install and use any other plugins and if you do make sure to change all the options that you need to true. Save this config and open the items.yml document. Here is where you can change what items players get. Leave the top four lines since they're fine how they are for now. The most important bits are under the items section. So the first line should be the name of whatever the player is going to get. This cannot have a space in it and I recommend using lower cases. The ID is what the item is going to be. You can write the ID number of the item or you can write the Minecraft name here. In this case I'm getting a diamond sword. I could also change this to 276 as this is the ID number of the diamond sword. If you want to find out all the ID numbers for all Minecraft items, just google Minecraft ID list. The slot is where the item is going to be placed in your inventory. Zero is actually the first slot in your inventory and it goes up all the way to 35. Here's a little image of slot numbers and names. One thing to note is that if you write arbitrary it will put the item in the first available slot. The name is the in-game name of the item. You can make this whatever you want and you can also use color codes. The lore is what's shown under the name of the item when you hover over it. This can be whatever you want and you can see a little example here on the right. The commands part are the commands which are going to be executed when for example you right click or left click the item. You should always refer to the starting guide on a spigot page as this is very very helpful and can tell you a lot about the plugin. To get there just go to the spigot page and go down and click the documentation then click the getting started button. And as I said before, if you don't understand anything or you want to find something out, you should always refer to this guide as this has a lot of very specific information. In our case, it's multi-click, which means no matter where or how I click it, it's going to run the commands. The message command instance will send a customized message to the player. The console instance will execute any command that the console can perform. The player instance will perform the command as if the player themselves were doing it. So if the player doesn't have a certain permission, for example, it won't let and perform the command. If you don't specify an instance, it's going to automatically think that the command is performed by the player. The commands type option is basically when the command is executed. The interact option is when you interact with the item whilst it's in your hand. The inventory is when you click the item in your inventory. The command sounds is the sound that's played when the command is executed correctly. You can find all the sounds that are available if you go to the item join documentation and scroll down into the info section and you'll see the sound effect type. Types. Click that and it'll open up a page with the full list of them. On the documentation you can also find different links, for example the enchant types, die color types and lots of other things. So if you need to use any of them, refer to this. The command cost and cooldown is self-explanatory. The cost is how much it's going to cost to run the command and the cooldown is how many seconds the player has to wait to run the command again. You can also change the cooldown message if you want. The enchantments here was going to be on the item. Refer back to the documentation if you don't know any of them. For example, if you want a sword to have knockback, all you need to do is write knockback and then the level after the colon. In this case, the sword has knockback 8. Item flags allow you to customize the item. For example, if you don't want the player to drop the 
the item, use the self drop flag. If you want the item to be unbreakable, use the unbreaking flag. You can find a full list of them in the getting started guide. Triggers are basically when the player gets the item. For example, when the player joins the game or when they die and respawn. Again, you can find all the triggers in the guide. You do have to make sure that the player has proper permissions though. In this case, the permission is item join.ultra. You can change this to whatever you want. Enabled in regions are what regions the items will be enabled in. We don't need to worry about this since we don't have something like world girl to set regions. And the enabled worlds are the worlds in which uh, items are given in. There are a lot more options, too many to explain in this video. So if you need any more info, refer to the plugin documentation. Now let's save and restart the server and go into game and see how it works. I'm not going to set up permissions because I'm an operator on this server. However, if you use the permissions, make sure that you set them up correctly. You can find the permissions on the plugin page. As you can see, because I'm an operator, I get all the items which are listed in the config. But let's just concentrate on the sword. As you can see, it's in the first slot, which is actually zero in the config, and I cannot drop it. However, if I interact with it, you can see multiple commands are executed. It also makes a sound, and it also has a cooldown. Because of the multi-click, even if I click it inside my inventory, it will still perform the command. If I jump off this tower, I'm going to die, but none of the items will drop since they're going to disappear just before that. Um, I'm also going to get some of the items back since those items have the respawn trigger on it. As you can see the only item that's dropped is the potion and that's because in the config it sets not to disappear when a player dies. There are many other things you can do like get custom books, custom options, custom maps with images on them and it's really not that hard to do. Just change a few things in the config and if you don't know something, like I said many many times, refer to the documentation. And if you're still having problems, give our support team a shout and they will happily help you out. Apart from that, this is the end of the tutorial. I hope this helped. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.